Our story opens today at the traveling emporium of Professor Waldo Wigglesworth, who at the moment seems to be pushing a new product. Here it is, ladies, the eighth wonder of the cosmetic universe. A skin pack guaranteed to remove wrinkles, warts, unwanted hair, freckles, and double chins, even triple chins. It's Pacaderm. Just apply Pacaderm in the jumbo size. Who's first for a demonstration? <laughs> I'll try it, Professor. Well, it's the wife of our beloved sheriff. Madam, you've really set us a task. To make you more beautiful than you are will be difficult indeed. You really like my face? I can truthfully say I've never seen anything like it. Very well, Dr. Feldspar, will you prepare the Pachyderm treatment? Uh, right away, Professor. Pachyderm? Fillmore, I thought we were selling Indian Guide Elixir. Yeah, it's the same stuff, Harpity. I just add this flower to it to thicken it up a little, like this. Then I put on a new label, see? Pachyderm. Do you think that's ethical? No, no, I think it's pretty messy. So here you are, Professor. And now, lovely lady, let us put Pachyderm to the test. Mm -hmm. Fear not, madam. The pack lifts off neatly in a few moments, revealing a lovelier, younger you. Mm. But if you just add flour and water, you get uh-oh. No, not uh-oh, Hoppity. Pachyderm. But, Fillmore, you didn't add flour. Yes, I did. See, it says here, Pure sifted cement. The uh, cement! Oh, boy. Hey, Uncle Waldo! Uncle Waldo! Get away, boy, you bother me. And now, madam, are you ready for the great unveiling? Ah. Very well. ta -da! What's this? I tried to tell you, Fillmore mixed the face cream with cement. Great gobs of goo! Yeah, isn't it? Oh, this is awful. One moment, madam, and you'll be free. If we wait more than a couple of moments, we won't be. How's that, Fillmore? Hey, look who's coming. It's the sheriff. And that's his wife under that cement. All right, move along, you people. Uh, what are you scallywags doing? Just a little scientific experiment, sheriff. And what's that? Uh, this is my cousin, Ermintrude Pickleheimer. Ah! Mm. Just over from the old country, doesn't speak English very well. Looks kind of familiar. Now, where have I seen that dumpy-looking figure and those big flat feet? That was more than the sheriff's <laughs> wife could stand. She swung blindly at the sheriff and pitched off the platform. Hey, what's happening to her face? She's just cracking a little smile, sheriff. Looks like she's cracking up. And with that, the hardened cement fell from the lady's face. Unfortunately, taking her eyebrows with it. Bernice, it's you! Let's get out of here. Why don't we take the truck, Uncle Waldo? Because I don't want to be slowed down. The charge! <laughs> and our friends went lickety-split down the road, followed by the sheriff. Is he still following us, Hoppity? Following? He's gaining us. He can't be. We just passed the county line. So did he. Yes, and the sheriff had good reason for his speed. He was pursued by his furious wife. Big flat feet, huh? Uh, let's turn off here and fool him. I wouldn't if I were you. Uh, how come? Look at that sign. Oh, yeah. Uh, what does it say? It says, hoot and holler, keep out. Keep out? With that poor man's Elliot Ness banging at our heels, this is no time to worry about trifles. Come on. It's not exactly a trifle we got to worry about, Uncle Waldo. It's a giant. The giant? Yep, the giant of Foot and Holler. Don't be ridiculous, Hoppity. Giants are merely mythological manifestations of primitive folk fears. Uh, I think you better explain that, Waldo. Too many big words for you, Nicodemus. Oh, I understand it all right. I thought you might explain it to him. Yikes! Oh, my sainted Aunt Agnes McGee. There really is a giant of Hoot and Holler. And he's enormous. Don't miss our next episode, Tree Top Tall, or Things Are Looking Up. <laughs>
Well, in our last episode, our friends really hit the big time. For they unexpectedly met up with the giant of Hooten Holler. Uh, he's the large economy size, all right. <laughs> Great snakes, listen to that voice, Manfred. Shh, I don't think he knows we're here yet. Let's tippy-toe away. Tippy-toe it is, Hoppity. <laughs> hmm? Fillmore, what did you blow that thing for? <laughs> because you are standing on my feet. Foot. Do you realize what you've done, Bainbridge? Yeah, I got you off of my foot. You also drew the giant's attention to us. Huh? Mm. Uh-oh, he spotted us. Let's get out of here. Well, heaven knows they tried. But when Fillmore started to run, he tripped over Waldo's cave. And when Waldo started to run, he tripped over Fillmore. But just as a giant hand reached down to grab them, Hoppity Hooper bounced into the sea. You can't catch me! You can't catch me! Mmm! And Hoppity dodged nimbly about as an enormous thumb and forefinger tried to pick him up. Let's get out of here, Fillmore. Hey, now wait! Wait, Waldo! Put me down, will you? I'm wasting all this footwork. Yeah, but we can't run off and leave Hoppity. We could make the effort. Yeah, but think of all the boys and girls watching this show. This is no time to worry about ratings. Yeah, what would all them kids out there think of you if you ran away and left Hoppity with a giant? They'd think... They'd think I was a cowardly fink. Yeah, sure they would. And they'd be right. I know you don't, Waldo. We're going back to save Hoppity. Very well. Forward. Meanwhile, back at the giant. Boy, am I ever getting tired. Just a little too tired, for at that moment... Hmm. The giant got Hoppity. Stay, Violet! Oh! Cease and desist, you mountainous mound of belligerent blubber, or you'll have to reckon with Professor Waldo Wigglesworth. Huh? And company. Hey, come on, pull him up, pull him up. They'll fight like a bear, won't you? Step over that line, I dare you. Oh, he's on my foot. Turn it off, Fillmore. Oh, yes, for heaven's sakes, turn it off. I can't stand it. I'm free, let's go! Wait a minute, did you hear what I heard? Hey, you mean this? <laughs> no, not that. Please don't blow that thing again. That! Does that sound like the voice of a big, ferocious monster to you? No, I guess not. Hey, Shorty, are you a big, ferocious monster? Well, no. In actuality, I'm just a big, lovable monster. But nobody ever stays around long enough to find out. You're not ferocious at all? Oh, heaven knows I've tried. I've really tried. I'm just not the type, I guess. Then how come you grab me? Well, I just can't stand little things hopping or buzzing or flitting around me. They drive me crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Loud noises set my teeth on edge, too. Okay, I'm sorry. Th then we're free to go? Oh, by all means. If you'll take them with you. Well, let's... Uncle Waldo, what is it? Hold it. Hold it. It's coming now. Oh, for the land's sake, what is it? Shh. He's getting an idea. This is it. We're rich. Yeah, we are. Well, practically, gentlemen, you'll see before you in this little gathering of four people the world's greatest basketball team. Basketball? But that takes five people. With a center as big as this one, who needs five? Gentlemen, welcome to our new basketball team, the Dribblers Five Minus One. The, the Dribblers, Dribblers Five Minus One? Oh, don't miss our next athletic episode. The game's the same or higher sport. <laughs>
Last time around, our friends had met the giant of Hoot and Holler and found him to be the gentlest of creatures. Unless he happens to step on you, of course. Then he squashes you. But gently. Now, here's my plan. We'll form a basketball team, just the four of us. How about, Mr., uh, what is your name? You can call me Tiny. Tiny? Tiny? Yes. All my brothers are bigger than I am. Yeah, hey, if we had his brothers, we could start a football team. Oh, they're already on a football team. They're linebackers for the Chicago Bears. Then now there's a team. <laughs> Please, Egbert. Well, Mr. Tiny, how about joining our basketball team? Oh, I'd be delighted. Only... Only what? What's a basketball? Oh, for sweet Nellie's sake. And so retiring to a nearby clearing, Waldo had to teach the giant how to play the game. Now, the first thing you do is take the ball. Uncle and... Waldo, we don't have a basketball. I got a yo-yo. It's not the same thing, Ethelred. Now, what do we use for... Hoppity, my boy. Huh? Hoppity, it's all up to you. To do what? Hoppity soon found out, for in a moment he found himself pressed into service as a basketball. That's it, Tiny. Keep him close to the ground. Bring it down the court. Make like a basketball regard. Okay, Professor. How's this? Ouch! What happened? I think he booted the ball, Waldo. My, that smarts. All right, let's try it again. Now, how do you like being a basketball? Uh -huh. It has its ups and downs. All right, Tiny, shoot! Sensational, Tiny. You'll make Wilt the stilt wilt. There's just one problem, Uncle Waldo. Where are you going to find a pair of size 97 and a half basketball shoes? Where else? In a shoe store. But, mister, that's in my sign. I need those shoes. How much? Well, about the $50 ought to do it. Sold. Here are $5 in cash and $45 in tickets for the game tonight. Take it down, Marmaduke. They're right, Waldo. But the name is Fillmore. Get your tickets right here for the game of the century, folks. The Dribblers 5 minus 1 versus the Swamp City Beavers. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The game is about to start. This way, sir. Yours is the third seat over. Play ball! Pass it here! Pass it here! Well, what a game that was. The Swamp City Beavers were good, but every time they made a shot, Two-Ton Tiny would stick his finger up through the hoop. And the ball would bounce out. On the other hand... Here you go, Fillmore! Okay, okay! <laughs> Fillmore, you can't dribble while blowing your bugle. I know, it makes it all soggy. Here, Tiny! Yay! When the game was over, Swamp City was swamped 102 to 2. I dropped one ball in the wrong basket. Well, from that moment on, the Dribblers 5 minus 1 were the new sensation of basketball. They beat every team in the country and soon became world champions. They even played the Harlem Globetrotters, with one hand tied behind them. They're my bugle hand, too. Naturally, they were called on to make speeches. I owe my success in basketball to living clean, thinking straight, training hard, and being 32 feet tall. They even made commercials for television. Hey, Hoppity, are you still washing your gloves with that greasy kid stuff? Sure, they're kid gloves. Oh. I've used this razor blade 22 times, and it still works. But you don't shave. No, I use it for sharpening pencils. But then one morning, Waldo received a note that drove the roses from his cheeks. Hey, Dad, look at that, Hoppity. Leaping horny toads, what are we gonna do? Well, I know what I'm going to do. And Waldo did it. He fainted. Well, what can be in that mysterious note? We'll find out next time in... Waldo the Weeper, or the Balls in the Other Court.
Tutan Tiny, the giant of Hoot and Holler, to form a basketball team called the Dribblers 5 minus 1, and soon soared to the top of the basketball ratings. But at the pinnacle of success, Waldo received a note which moved him strongly and horizontally. Uncle Waldo! Yeah, he's fainted, Hoppity! Let me see that note. It's from Tutan Tiny, and it says, I quit. Goodbye. Jumping Jenny Ren, this is serious. Oh, oh, Hoppity, I had the most awful dream. I dreamed that Tiny quit the team. That was no dream, Uncle Wallow, he did. But we've got a big game tonight. We're playing the All-Stars in a benefit. I mean, it's a worthy charity. It's where am I? Right behind the eight ball with the rest of us. But I wonder why Tiny's leaving us. Uh, let's ask him. But why are you quitting, Tiny? I won't stay in a place where people sell other people. People sell people? Yes. Look at that. Giant sale. Big, big bargains. But that doesn't mean they sell giants, Tiny. They're not selling midgets. And how about that one? Giant clearance. Everything must go. I can take a hint. You mean? I'm going. The timid giant lumbered slowly out of town, leaving our friends in a quandary. Now, this ain't a quandary. It's a chili parlor. Meanwhile, in the locker room of the All-Stars... Well, boys, my idea worked. That big lummox has left town. Now, remember, the only player they got is the frog. Concentrate on Hoppity. Yes, they'll concentrate on Hoppity, and let's face it, Fillmore, we are not very good players. Oh, I don't know. Listen to this. <laughs> Basketball players, I mean. Hey, but Waldo. Shut up and eat your beans, Tamerlane, and... Ooh. Ooh. Hey, what is it, Waldo? You got a hot enchilada? Move the plate, Fillmore. He's getting an idea. <laughs> Mexican jumping beans. Mexican jumping beans? Like those there. Uh, ain't they kind of little to play basketball, Waldo? Yes, but you're not, Fillmore. Oh, miss, a large bowl of jumping beans for my friend. Si, senor, right away. Uh, Waldo, I don't think... I know, and it's just as well. Keep your fingers crossed, boys. I can't, Waldo. Why not? I keep dropping my fork. Under Waldo's watchful eye, Fillmore devoured a huge bowl of Mexican jumping beans. How you feel, Fillmore? Uh, just great. Then, in just a little while, it was game time. Whatever you do, Fillmore, stay under this basket. Uh, sure, Professor. Boy, those All-Stars sure look tough. Well, the All-Stars did concentrate on Hoppity, all five of them. Golly, I don't have a chance. Help! Here, Waldo! But, of course, Waldo missed the ball, and it bounced into the hands of a charging all-star. Down the court he went, stopped, shot for the basket, and then... Yes, Fillmore knocked the ball right back out of the basket. And from that moment on, no matter how carefully the all-stars aimed and shot, not one ball got through the hoop. That's what I call using your head, Fillmore. Uh, no, Hoppity. It's what I call <laughs> using the old bean. The score was 0-0 zero, zero with five seconds to go when a loose ball. Waldo picked it up, glanced at the charging All-Stars. Ah! Terrified, he threw the ball into the air and it swished through the hoop just as the game ended. We win to the nothing! Yay! Next day, by request, our friends were on their way back to Foggy Bog, Wisconsin. A lot of planes were flying that day, but there was no mistaking the one our boys were on. <coughs> you will tune in again soon for the further adventures of Hoppity Hooper, won't you? <coughs> Thank you.